Welcome. So as you probably know, Cox TD engines do not come with throttles. They can essentially only run at full throttle, nor does it seem that you can purchase a throttle for these engines. But throttle control can be quite useful when flying RC to give you more control over the plane. So I decided to make a throttle for my vintage TD engines. I wanted the throttle to be simple so that I could make it with my limited tools, mainly hand tools. I also did not wish to make any permanent modifications to the engines, since they are vintage and pieces of history. After trying several different designs, I arrived at this idea that covers the air intake. The key to this idea is that you need to cover the intake quite completely and have a relatively good seal to restrict most of the air from entering the intake when the throttle is in the closed position. Otherwise, the throttle will not do a whole lot to reduce the engine speed. Fortunately, there's a nice large machine axle to rotate what I will call the throttle valve in a rather precise and controlled way. Yes, I'm referring to the cylinder, which happens to be the axis of rotation in this design. The cooling ribs act as flanges or thrust bearings to control where on the axle the throttle piece sits. This is important since we ultimately want to tightly cover the intake without any major gaps. At the same time, the throttle must rotate without much resistance so that you can use a small 9G or even a 5G servo to operate it. Here is a clip of the throttle in action. I think it works quite well and lowers the speed of the engine. Unfortunately, I was not able to measure the speeds as I did not have a tachometer, but the change is quite audible. This throttle took me about an hour to make and a couple hours experimenting to come up with the design. Materials include a soft metal strip. I used aluminum, but other malleable metals might work also. The thickness was just under one millimeter and just happened to be stuff that I had lying around in my garage. Note that the thickness needs to fit between the ribs. You do not want it to be too thin as the part will not hold its shape very well. For the main part of the throttle, first I cut out a rectangular shape of about one inch wide and a couple inches long. I used shears to cut it, and mine happened to be unnecessarily large, but they worked anyway. Next, I used a stepped drill bit and a hand drill to make the cut out for the cylinder. The hole is close to 12 millimeters, or just under half inch in diameter. I then used shears to open up the hole into a U-shape so that it could be fitted over the cylinder. You want to take care to cut the cylinder hole slightly smaller at first and use a file to adjust it so that you can get a good fit on the cylinder. You don't want it to be too loose. It might take a little bit of filing and adjusting the straightness to get the throttle to rotate freely. Once the hole is cut, you can place the part onto the cylinder to try it. 
Then what is probably the toughest part of this is to properly bend the piece so that it intimately sits over the intake when in the closed position. Getting the bend in the right place and at the right angle is key. Again, with a little bit of measuring, dry fitting and adjusting, I was able to achieve this quite easily. Once you have the angle set, you may need to very slightly bend the entire thing up or down to have it press onto the intake with just the right amount of force to close it off, but not so much force that it results in too much resistance to its rotation, since a relatively small servo should be able to turn the throttle. You will then want to add the rear bar, which secures the throttle onto the cylinder. It is important that this bar is well fitted to prevent too much slop around the cylinder, but also avoiding adding too much resistance to rotation. One thing to note is that the bar sits one rib higher on the cylinder, since it cannot be in the same plane and place as the main piece. You will then want to slightly rotate the cover from side to side to find the best position where it sits and covers the intake completely and evenly without visible gaps. The angles and rotation result in compound angles and there is only one position that results in the throttle valve sitting evenly over the intake. Once you have identified this position, use a pencil to trace the intake and this is where you will cut out the shape of the front of the throttle. A file and sandpaper to remove burrs along with slight bending adjustments will do wonders to get the assembled throttle to smoothly rotate while tightly covering the implant in the closed position. As a side note, I used 2mm screws with nuts to assemble it all. I have built several of these, trying a few things including adding a stopper for the closed position and changing the shape or including a hole to make the entire piece a little less stiff. Overall, all these variations work similarly and pretty well. And that's it. A simple do-it-yourself project to upgrade your TD engines with throttle control. Please feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or feedback. Thanks for watching.